Hi, and welcome to another episode of Mind of Five with uh, me and my co-host, Daniel Moeller. Me. That was, that, me. Was, that was your cue. Didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> totally missed it. Second half <laughs> session. How y'all doing? We I love are, it. I love it here in Drinks Around the Table, by the way. It's so cozy. Right. Well, okay. Drinks Around the So, just to be clear with everybody, Drinks Around the Table is a separate show. The channel is Aaron Conaway. Oh, this okay. is a segment on... Aaron Conway. I got ahead of myself. Called Mind to Five that I co created with Daniel Moeller of Daniel Moeller fame. Hopefully, hey, there's hey, not hey. other Daniel Moeller's, but whatever. All right, so this is enough babbling. Tonight's <laughs> episode, probably going to be our last one for a little while, at least on my end. You, If you do some solo stuff, cool, but uh, I've got, we are bombarded with shows and projects and so this may be the season finale for a little bit for as far as both of us being here yeah yeah but i believe so that being the case tonight's episode is the top five most frequently played albums that we've arted by arted by <laughs> that was a pain in the ass of a title to come up with by the way arted lately very much so. Uh, uh, so there's like a huge difference between like picking albums to do art art as in like visual art and albums to write to. Like big difference, by the way. For me. Well, what's, anyway, the diff- what's the difference? Well, when writing, I can't really have anything with a lot of lyrics. And oh, okay. Gotcha, For gotcha, me, gotcha. like it, it is a, it's a, it's a tough one. But same, anyway. same. No, okay. That makes sense. And that's true. When I do draw, it doesn't really matter what if lyrics or not. But anyway, all right. So as the guest on the channel tonight, you get to start with your honorable mentions. Oh, Wait, do we do we need to go over any? Basically, it was yeah, whatever we wrote or art like drew, whatever. Mm-hmm. Did you? I mean, like maybe you didn't. Maybe you did draw just writing. Uh, well, I kind of did the, the hodgepodge of both um and the, my my choices most of my choices are very recent choices like i did have an issue because of the why like i was like but i year a couple of years ago i used to always listen to this and i go right. through phases so sure. i have some choices that um like especially my honorable mentions and like the lower half of my list is like more wide spanning that has been longer but the top of my list is definitely like the most recent things that i've just been addicted to so gotcha that's gotcha, kind of gotcha. where i landed i went with long like the and i actually included the the pieces that i've done to them mm-hmm. um to to each pick each album mm-hmm. um but i did more of what's gotten the most airplay for me as i'm working okay. so but cool either way works all right what are your honorable mentions Okay, honorable mentions. First one is Arrowhead. Um, the band Arrowhead, they had an album come out called Coven of the Snake in 2019. They're an Australian stoner rock band. It's like, it's kind of in the genre of what they call fuzz or fuzz okay. stoner rock. Just like, it's just, just like just heavy drones of that like hardcore right, right, right. sound. And um, there is, uh, this probably is the most and I think it actually is the only lyric heavy um, album on my list. Um, so, you know, he does sing um, throughout it, but it's he's got that voice that's just, I don't know, it kind of blends in with the music, I think. It just becomes part of it. Gotcha. Um, so that's my first honorable mention. Second honorable mention, Miles Davis's Bitches Brew, 1970. Nice. Um, it's his 27th full length album, Columbia Records. Um, this is where he kind of, this is the album where he kind of departed from the traditional jazz sort of stuff right. into more psychedelia. Like that whole like era of 1970 is one of my, as you'll probably see, it's like one of my favorite eras of music right. ever. Um, so yeah, it's huge. I can't listen to it with my wife around. She, it's too, it's too jarring. It's too atonal, but yeah, it's a great album sweet it is a great album all right my honorable mentions uh the first one is john carpenter's anthology movie themes 1974 to 1998 october 20th 2017 love it um 
yeah, it's basically all that 80s synth. But yep. um, as far as writing to, I've done a ton of D&D campaign work uh, to it. And then I also a fair amount of uh, the horror stories from the Te Michael Gideon collection, Tales from Halloween. Sweet. We're written to it. And then my other one is Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Rings soundtrack, November 20th, 2001. Um, which also a ton of D&D was written to and the kingdom stuff of my Harrowed Earth work like the Cicero once you that I'm working on now there's been a, a fair amount of uh, fellowship soundtrack playing there nice. so those are my two that one got nixed for my list it was up there yeah no I knew it'd there, be but... I knew it'd be in the discussion I didn't know if it'd make it but yeah it's because it just isn't a recent thing that I've been listening to lately is one of the main reasons why it got cut. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's get into the big five. What, sir, is your number five? Okay. My number five is by the band Soft Machine, and it's their third album called Third. <laughs> Came out in 1970. Um, so Soft Machine, they got their name from William S. Burroughs' book, The Soft Machine. Uh, okay. So um, they started out actually um, touring with uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience. Um, nice. So in their first album, so that very like weird, psychedelic, jazzy, kind of a lot like Bitches Brew. Um, but this album, they let's see, one of their one of their uh, band members left um, and they got a new guy, a saxophonist, Elton Dean. And so there's just like this excellent like sax alto sax kind of 70s sound throughout this whole piece. It's very, it very much harkens to that kind of atonal jazz sort of vibe, but it's very psychedelic at the same time. Um, just right. like completely right up my alley. Um, and this album is like very interesting because there's there are some lyrics in it, very faint. The song Moon in June on this is actually the last song they ever had lyrics to for the rest of their career because they made multiple albums after this. And after that, they just went like completely like away from like, we don't need to sing anymore. We just need to has that improvisational sort of nice you know, feel to it where, you know, they're just they're they're composing as they're playing. And right. I, it's the kind of stuff I totally love. It gives me a lot of energy. Um, I'll send you a link to it if you have it. Yes. Yeah. Machine because wow 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 right wow. well then yeah, i plan on we're gonna we're gonna link uh well maybe not to like the lord of the rings stuff because i think everybody that has heard at least parts of that but link anything we can find in the below in the below i don't even know what that means all right yeah yeah Down oh they're below. from england by the way oh okay uh, canterbury just fyi they're part of that whole canterbury rock movement gotcha um, anyway yeah sorry no 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 you're cool all right, so my number five is in a, probably the only obscure pick I'll have on here. Maybe not, but it's obscure. But I fell in love with it. So Willie Vlaughton's Northline soundtrack from 2008, his, I think it was his second novel. The first edition of it came with a CD. And he is the, um, he's the front man singer songwriter for Richmond Fontaine, his band and it's it's just a very chill not bluesy at all it's actually almost kind of a man i don't even know how to describe it really maybe like a light country folk but that's not even doing it justice i can hear dusty right now as he's listening to this groaning at like Ugh. <laughs> but it and it's got a little bit of lyric as far as not even lyrics more like just kind of people humming along with it like just a little voiceover of of humming and it's uh but otherwise for the most part it's all instrumental just guitar and um but i wrote most of waking the weaver and nearly all the short stories from before the weaver this was in rotation while I was writing them. Nice. 
but it's um i know you can i don't know as far as you know the first edition of the book i i don't imagine it's worth a ton but i know you can download i think you can get on spotify the north line soundtrack but mm. solid listen for me I, yeah that sounds interesting that's really obscure i've never heard of that before ever yeah they've got quite a few out i don't know how many for sure but richmond fontaine they've got i mean they still put out stuff so yay new music number four all right number four for me is by the band sleep their american rock band from california another kind of like arrowhead kind of in that stoner fuzz doom rock phase where their voice just sounds like one of the guitars just wow. like constant like buzz sort okay. of sound um their third album dope smoker um actually it was originally titled jerusalem they decided they wanted to make an album that was all just one song so wow. the whole album and it was all recorded in one take um so it originally came out in 1999 they did a reissue of it in 2003 because the original recording had some like mess ups to it um but really crazy it's just it's just that it's just heavy it's like um it's like listening to like astral travel music but with just heavy droned out just grungy guitars just in this constant fuzzy sound i i don't know how how else to describe it but i i love it and it's got rhythm to it and any their voices are just kind of these growls and grunts through the whole song that just mix in as like one of the guitars so i don't even know what the fuck they're saying i don't right. care yeah. um they actually snippets of this song were in um the movie Broken Flowers by Jim Jarmusch starring Bill Murray. Murray, yeah. Um, he's playing aspects of this song throughout that this one guy made for him on a tape. And it's like really weird. It's it's very jarring because it doesn't fit in with the rest of the movie, which is really slow and, you know, melodic. Um, so it's just really weird. But yeah, I mean, I listened to this thing, um, you know, a lot while drawing comics, especially Psychonaut Presents um my yeah. psychonaut stuff this was this was one of like the top things um that i've been addicted to so love it nice. sleep dope smoker dope smoker all right what are you gonna do my number four will hopefully get me some street cred back with dusty <laughs> is liquid tension experiments self-titled album from march 10th came out on my birthday 1998 um Dusty's the one that kind of led me to them through a series of other, you know, check this out, check this out. Actually, I think he did this one. He may have said, check out. But I, I mean, it's Mark Portnoy, Jordan Rudess, uh, John Petrucci from Death Theater, or sorry, Dream Theater. Good God, Dusty's pissed at me again. Um, Tony Levin from King Crimson and Peter Gabriel's bands. Um, nice. It's nice. just shredding just super fat like out the gate the first moment that the album starts it's just and it just doesn't stop for the hour plus that the album is nice and i basically the entirety of um appalachian blues was written maybe not the entirety most of it there's another album down the road here that uh got some play on it too but most of it got written to this album so, but uh yeah i mean zero lyrics just badass guitar hour in length love it i can't okay. stole as long as you can on some that, of mine but that was like some really great uh name drops there man like peter gabriel and king crimson and Holy shit. Dream Theater. I know yeah. how it's pronounced, Dusty. Dream Theater. <laughs> All right. What's your number uh, three? Um, my number three. This is this is a, like total obscurity. I think I've talked with you about this before. Um, but the band is called ACI and they're German uh, kind of synth uh, uh, synthesizer band um, okay. from 1982. Nice. And um, the album's called Tef 
a typhon rush. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that <laughs> correct. I don't even know what that means. Okay. I didn't even bother to look it up. I don't really want to know, but it's actually um, made by, I can list off the guy's names, but what's weird is that the main dude, Armin Bierman, uh, apparently might have been like a pseudonym. Like a lot of people don't really know who he was, but he was one of like, you know, just one of those obscure people doing prog rock sort of synthesizer, you know, music around that time, like Tangerine Dream and, you right. know, Vangelis and those sorts of, you know, fun sort. It's got those sorts of vibes. So if you like Tangerine Dream and I'm a sucker for that sort of shit. Hell, um, Tangerine Dream almost made my list. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mine too. Mine too, totally. Um, but this album, it's this is the only album that he ever, that this dude ever made. Um, and apparently, um, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Anyway, long story short, it's just uh, the cover of it, and you'll display it, I'm sure. It's yeah, just this like, weird. They're looking at it right now. Okay, <laughs> dude <laughs> flying on a fish that's just floating above ground. And the reason why I love this is because every song sounds like it belongs in a Saturday morning cartoon or like a nice. CBS afternoon, like after school special, right. like one of the, or CBS storybook, like yeah, CBS yeah, yeah. story, like, like they're just like, it's so quirky and like, where the hell did this come from? <laughs> and of course it like didn't do well enough at all that people like nobody really liked it. And it just, it kind of went into obscurity and they never made another album, but I love it. The Moog is one of the main um, synthesizer instruments that's used. And the Moog's got that especially like kind of sound like like the rentals. You remember Return of the Rentals from the 90s? Like right. the, the Moog was the that kind of synth sound that they were using. I you put that in your music, you got my money. Um, and this is like this is where this is like this album is like the gods of that 80s like moog saturday morning sound like this is the this is the album they birthed out of nice so i'm just saying you've got to give this that's yeah you've got to give this fucker that's a try it's selling right there it, it's 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 perfect for getting up early saturday morning to draw comics to get yourself a bowl of cereal and just draw some comics to this and you're just you're good nice that sounds amazing all right, my number three dropped on May 31st, 1996. Mm. It's the soundtrack to Dragonheart. Oh, I knew this was going to be on the list. This is this is one I should have. Bet I on. it the movies the movies great the movies fun. I mean I I enjoy it, but the soundtrack. I have written countless short stories over the years since this came out. Randy Edelman score. Um, the theme from it has been used everywhere movie everywhere. trailers like academy award montages the olympics one year that, so this day. Na, 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 that everywhere and like it all stems from this little 1996 fantasy movie about draco the dragon and i i don't even, i can't even put into words i'm saying that a lot tonight but it it hits me on on these like just very kind of like what you were just saying about saturday morning cartoon like it's just it's a very pure place that I, it hits me that i love where it, i just like mentally get me in this vibe of adventure and fun and like i don't know just so many cool stories have popped into my head just listening to the music but it's uh yeah, like I said, what is that? Thirty years ago. Mm -hmm. So that long, I've been writing short stories to it. I I pull that I'll, that score out every once in a while to listen to 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 work too. It's great. It's awesome. It's very similar in pieces. It's not as well composed as Fellowship of the Ring, but it's very mm -hmm. similar in where you can just feel like hobbits are walking around. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that's the part of it that speaks to me. So that's my number three. That's a solid pick. What is cool. your number two? Okay, here we go. Number two. So I'm taking this whole like uh, that synthesizer vibe and like the rest of my list is going to just be 
all over it okay all right. <laughs> this is where i've been living the past year or so man um the motion picture soundtrack to drive 2011 have you ever seen this movie? i haven't seen the flick i've heard about it i've heard yeah. about the soundtrack to it directed by nicholas reffin um ryan gosling's like a stunt driver a hollywood stunt driver who who's also like a getaway driver um for criminals um right. and it, the whole thing he just gets mixed up in this like scenario where he kind of falls in love with his neighbor her her husband comes back from prison and gets him mixed up oscar isaac is the husband the girl is uh carrie mulligan um it's not like amazing movie um but it's good it's got albert brooks as like one of the main bad guys right. albert brooks um yeah. you know just christina hendrix is in it ron perlman brian cranston it's just it felt like watching um like a crime movie from the 90s sort of thing when you know that whole pulp fiction era that's the way it kind of feels but the soundtrack is just all synth wave in the synth wave genre um kind of stuff so it's a kind of a compilation it was put together by cliff martinez so there's an actual score towards the end of it but the first five songs are just a mix of uh different artists kavinsky um uh let's see desire um let's see who call uh, electric youth um and just like really like so i hate to say it but it's just totally makes you feel like like you're in the 80s sort of thing and they've got this such an electric pop vibe to it that it just gives me so much energy to create too and there's lyrics but the way synth pop is kind of designed it's like it, those lyrics fit in really well you know with the electronic music that it's accompanying so um i love it i can't get enough of it my kids are like oh it's friday night dad's gonna be putting on drive <laughs> it's like one of the first things i put on to get started with like my friday night right um art stuff um and it's so it like kicks it off every time and it fits because like the the movie is just like you know he's a driver so it's got that like right that Adrenaline. drive yeah. yeah yeah and it like really gets you pumped up and i never really saw much with ryan gosling he's kind of bland in it he's kind of like the way he is in the blade runner sequel he's yeah. just kind of like you know stoic, stoic yeah. Yeah. and stuff um, and I'm not knocking him as an actor because I've seen right. him stuff that I thought he was great in. It's he, that's the character, right? Sure. Um, but it's good. I I recommend it, and I recommend the soundtrack. Well, give what, it a listen. What about you, man? What's your number two? My number I'm two. Loving this, dude, because you're actually turning me on to a lot of stuff that I've not known before, so I can add it to my collection. And uh, yeah, you've given me a lot so. to listen to, so. I, I mean, obviously, I dig synth not as much as you dig synth, seemingly, but I uh, I do dig it. All right, my number two though is John Coltrane's Lush Life from February or March. It's not really known. 1961. I mean, it that tenor sax. Yep. Billy Strayhorn's Lush Life in particular on it is like so chill. It's so it's. Yep so many nights sipping bourbon incense burning in a low lit room the only sound is like the keyboard clicking yeah um i came to giant steps later because when i did like when i found out i think it was hoyt that was telling me that um prestige the studio like released lush life without coltrane's way in at all like he had nothing to do with it they just took un um what do you call it unreleased work right. and threw it on there but um and then like coltrane and um johnny hartman covered lush life later in 63 in john coltrane and johnny hartman but and i, I think it's a brilliant album but i prefer the 61 lush life because it's just instrumental like they add mm -hmm. you know johnny hartman singing lyrics and it's you know like i said it's great but it's i i came to it. it's like one of those things where like if you come to the movie first you prefer it over the book or vice versa typically yep yep lush life i hit that song instrumentally first and so that's that's what i dig i mean that's the one i prefer um tons of everything timberhaven related 
has been lush life has been played there in fact waking the weaver i think there's even i think i, I actually say. included yep i was gonna some, say he, he, i thought he talked about it in the yeah book. so big big fan of that album that song in particular but i mean it's like all, an hour all in for the song so it goes on repeat a lot mm. but um yeah definitely my number two i love love coltrane love supreme is one of the first things i came to with coltrane so it's yeah. always one of those personal favorites for me and that was close on the list too um yeah Excellent dig it shit. all right love it your number one drum roll okay here we go <laughs> i'm almost i'm almost embarrassed nah. okay so there's the there's the synth wave genre okay right okay. so it's like this late it's this genre that's out now of like new music but it it's all based upon like 80s nostalgia okay. um so it's got this like weird retro feel to it so it's a, it's like it's trying to be um hearkening to the 80s but it's aware of it it's like hyper self-aware and it's meant to be right right well, there's all these different genres of synth wave future synth retro wave blah blah blah, blah vapor wave <laughs> I, I've come across my favorite genre, which is called Mall Soft. And it's soft? it's just totally tries to just recreate and emulate the music and sounds as if you were just in a mall in the 80s, like walking in the mall. Like, how so? <laughs> like sound effects? Well, you're going to have to listen to it. Yeah, I mean, there's sound effects they splice in. They'll splice in like old stuff, like, you know, announcement things. But it's all just the kind of music. It's distorted in such a way, almost like you're listening through it, like as a cassette tape in the past. And it's just that, and it's even the music is kind of like something you would hear in J.C. Penney almost, you know, like right. not quite Muzak because there might be lyrics and whatever. I mean, it's just, it's, I'm obsessed. So I don't know anything about any of the artists or anything. I don't even know if there's distinct albums. I found this YouTube mix and I'll send it to you just called Neon Palm Mall. All right. And I have let, like, I, at this point, I literally dream this album almost every night. I listen wow. to this album so much. Like, and my wife and kids are just like, oh my God, he's playing Mall Soft again. <laughs> of course, he's like, because I play it almost every single night. I can't get enough of it. I don't know why. For almost a year now, i have just absorbing this album. And it does. It's just like it completely pulls you in. And so it's it's just a mix of like a whole bunch of different um, artists. I mean, half of them like have like Chinese script to their names. I don't even or Japanese script. I don't even know. Some right. sort of Asian script that I don't even know. There's a, one of them's a band called Surfing, Vector Graphics, St. Pepsi, VHS logos. So see, a lot of them even take on that whole right. like, 80s retro vibe. Um, but yeah, I I don't I don't know why. I, I'm addicted to it. And and I will admit it is it is pulling me so heavy into 80s nostalgia. All I can do is think about Battlefield Mall in the 80s in Springfield, and there's you know right um, our arcade walden books castle yeah. Um, yeah i mean back when fucking malls were kick-ass right um and just that whole era of um you know not always being tapped into everything but once you got like into the mall zone it's like you felt like that was like the internet right of the world you felt like you were tapped into stuff and um yeah i just i love it i can't help it um, how, and did you, so how did you how did you get there because it doesn't seem like um, something I kind mean, of yeah. from drive kind okay. of so i've always been interested like you know the the aci thing and the soft machine evangelist tangerine dream i've always been interested in that sort of like progressive rock synth synthesizer music right but dr when i heard drive and i was like oh i love this kind of shit it's like i didn't realize that there was i'm not tapped into what the kids are into man i'm 43 years old <laughs> but i didn't realize that there was like this whole genre of music out there that people were creating that's like the stuff that i really enjoyed you know my you know from the past right so i just through youtube digs 
right? It's like, um, you know, it comes up as a suggested thing because I like okay. drive and like, oh, I'll try that. And what's this vaporwave thing? I'll just, you know, search vaporwave and try out different albums. And I have a ton. I, I, this originally this whole list was nothing but vaporwave like mall soft shit and i was like i can't do this to him i can't do this to, <laughs> yeah to, i mean it'd be like there. see the last answer like get yeah some, <laughs> get some get some versatility but i eventually landed on this album sometime last summer and it's just been wow i it's i very rarely have an album that i literally just listen to almost every single day right um but i don't get tired of it i don't know what's wrong with me i think i might have a problem <laughs> but because this is not the kind of shit i would think i was normally be into but um i'm loving it so yeah now that you can tell i'm gonna have to I, I will say that one is I, I i'm not as excited to listen to that one as i am intrigued <laughs> to listen to that one like i just gotta hear what this is and it could be I fall for it. Maybe it'll take me to that same nostalgic place. But I mean, because of Stranger Things kicking off this like resurgence of 80, I've got a little bit of 80s burnout as far yeah. as some, well, not necessarily the content, but the that nostalgia goggles vibe. But I'll definitely give it a shot. You all right. You'll you're you're not at all going to be surprised at my number one. You may not know what it is, but you yeah, when, when a... you hear it, you're going to be like, oh yeah, no shit. Okay. But I, I think I have an idea. But my number one is from 1989, our Carlos Nakai's Canyon trilogy. Yes. I yes. I mean, renowned flautist, Navajo, UT, UT, I don't know how you pronounce that actually, heritage. Apologies to everyone. Ute, um, Ute, Ute. I think it's just Ute. Okay. I mean, dude's master of the Native American cedar flutes. I I have listened to this album on repeat since I was thirteen. Yep. I've sat at the edge of canyons, listening through headphones, so I could live up to the title. Uh, in all of my travels, I had this CD with me when I was bumming around the country. There's literally nothing of length that I've ever written since I was a teen that wasn't accompanied in part by this album. Uh, it finally went platinum in 2015, which I discovered when I was like putting this list together, had no idea, um, and got a re-release with 15 minutes of extra music. So I'm gonna be searching for that, but literally nothing. If you've read anything of mine, you have been in the embrace and didn't know it of R. Carlos Mackay's Kenyan Trilogy. I literally did not put this on my list because I knew you would put this on your yeah. fucking list. That You turned me on to this as a young kid and yeah. I never looked back. R. Carlos Mackay is he, fucking good. Good God. I mean, he's got brilliant album, other brilliant albums, but this is the first one I came to and it's never let me go. Like, yeah. freaking 33 years later and yep. it remains the best it's one of those albums that you're like this is the thing i think i could listen to when i die seriously like, I mean, like I've, a... I've laid in fields looking at stars in the middle of the night with this playing on a boom box <laughs> that's how old that is <laughs> um nearby like it oh it's just so hauntingly beautiful what did you come by that by the way because you you it was like 13 i'm like i was 13 dad actually got it for me speaking of malls we were at uh we were at walden books in the mall it all comes together <laughs> yep it's all there but uh he's the one that bought that for me that's fucking good. And i don't i had no idea how he knew about it but he was like well, he was always interested in the, I think he liked you know, it. He always liked Native American, American music. And yeah. I mean, between that and uh, like the Scottish bagpipes, man, like talk about opposite extremes. But he, uh, <laughs> but From he's calm the one, to yeah, really anxious. Right? Just very ear splitting. I never got into the pipes. But anyway, that is my number one. That's strong. That is strong. There's, I know a lot of Native American flute, so I'm really into this, this style of music. And that album, even more so just than him as a person, but that album tops them all. So good. Yeah, good uh, yeah. choice. Hey, uh, we'll put all the links 
to everything so you can give it a listen mm. down below what do you think out of, out of your recent stuff that you've done is your number one what you've listened to i mean is that why it made your number one you've written most or you've created most to it I mean, not of uh, probably not of all time. That's why. Well, I had no, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that like division of like, do I do of all time or do I do recently? And so I kind of had to toss it up a little bit. Right. I mean, there's a lot of things that you know didn't make the list that could like a lot of Philip Glass stuff. Sure. Um, even more Miles Davis because like kind of blue. Kind of blue almost made my list. Kind of blue is like always been a staple. Yeah. Um, so I actually um, overall Miles Davis arguably I, I prefer to Coltrane. I just I came to Coltrane first. Yeah. Miles Davis definitely made a, a mention in Waking the Weaver. Well, mm-hmm. albeit through mentioning Betty Davis, but <laughs> anyhow. It's interesting to me to talk about to with creators about what they were listening to watching eating drinking like yes. while they created like what's in the dna of that project yeah absolutely i love that it makes the project so much more rich for me yeah i feel like the the, the one thing i do credit art school for or at least just because of one professor i had was like the making of the thing is part of the thing it's part of the pro- process yeah. which is why i love like that's why i try to post my stuff when i'm working on it like to make people part of that process i totally dig it and i love especially to hear um not just music but yeah the books and authors that influence them the artists that influence them just location like where you did it Mm. where like yeah no it's all fascinating stuff i like we told we were gonna try to chill for a little while do we want to pick the return topic now or do we want to wait until we know when we're coming back i i think i personally would rather wait because usually like the host yeah you're it's your pick That's I, I would be picking yeah i'm not prepared okay. I, I didn't prepare well no so, yeah and i mean that makes sense because we had talked that yeah we're just we need a little break mm-hmm. and i mean i've hopefully this doesn't go the way of my other show speaking of drinks around the table but i do have a list of cool people that want to come on and right. uh, sit and chat but yeah just gotta have more hours in the day yeah but, we'll get there we'll get yep, there that's true what do you guys they passed the daylight savings time thing so that's gonna save us right that'll give us that extra hour is that, that extra that, hour that's, about... that's all i need <laughs> what uh what are you plugging we got Planet, uh, everybody. I mean, Planet Comic Con is the, the Planet thing. Comic Con. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would have new comics out that you could buy right now, but unfortunately, my distributor is being weird. So we're, you're just going to have to wait till Planet Comic Con, ladies and gentlemen, and come see us there. And then you'll get a copy in hand uh, for true. like with a free signature. Yeah, I right. won't even charge you for the signature. We won't even, it's not even extra. <laughs> <laughs> so it's and you get to meet us and talk with us and it's true we're great we guys and you can share your top five with us that's right you should share it down below but uh yeah by all means if you see us at planet any of these top five pop in and tell us what yours is and i would but, like to uh, drop too that we are going like at planet comic con if you on our event on facebook if you say that you are going and you actually show up and see us, we'll enter your name into a drawing. Um, and you could win, but at the end of the con, we'll pull, you know, um, out of the drawing hat, the literal drawing hat, the literal right. hat. The literal okay? hat. Okay. Um, and then you'll win a free um, commission from both Aaron and I, a joint commission. That's right. Which we'll probably announce on the event on the Facebook page. And I'll put a link to it down below so you can join us um it's otherwise i'm surely in... to be worth i mean you'll be putting your kids through college with this commission yes I know yes means that's can... weird. Like... i'm just the yes. that that subtle nod is to say you cannot sue us if that ends up not being the case hyperbole is ruling the night it's all about the market it's all about the free market yeah right 
Um, I'm in the okay. same boat. I don't have anything. I mean, everything that Good. drops new is going to happen at Planet. So I have nothing new. Otherwise, all of our stuff you can find at the links below. Um, got anything else? No, man. I think we're good. This was a good one. I really love this. I'm really yeah, inspired. I, I want to start listening to these new things of yours that I didn't know about. So Exactly. I'm going to do the same. Um, everybody else, if you give a, lot, a listen to the links below, tell us what you think of our picks. If you yep. don't already know about Tell us them. yours, too. Give us more. And uh, you'll see us back here soon. All right. Till next time. Later.